Want to learn about some awesome shit? Watch this. Awesome ships and boats come in many different shapes and sizes. From 1,000 foot long aircraft carriers and freighters down to small boats under 10 feet in length. Well, if you're like most people, when you see a ship, you're probably wondering what it does. How long is it? And what is it used for? Well, in this tape, We'll try to answer some of those questions while looking at real ships and boats in action. And we're going to visit a Navy destroyer and tour some of its special places. Then we'll see some of the Navy's biggest battleships and aircraft carriers as they sit in port. We're also going to take a ride on a ferry that's used to transport hundreds of cars. And we'll even interview the crew and visit the engine room. Finally, we'll watch as huge cargo ships are unloaded by cranes that tower over a hundred feet high. Of course, you'll see many other types of awesome ships, including tugboats, sailboats, coast guard cutters, fishing boats, and much more. USS Turner Joy is called a destroyer. The name destroyer came about because this size of ship was much more agile than a battleship. And so they were developed to protect battleships from small torpedo boats. Originally, they were called torpedo boat destroyers. And eventually, they ended up being called simply destroyers. The Turner Joy was built in 1957 and 58. She's 418 feet long and displaces over 4,000 tons when fully loaded. She's powered by 70,000 horsepower steam turbines and has two propeller shafts. Her normal crew would be about 320 men. Now let's look at some different parts of a ship. The front of a ship is called the forecastle. This is where the anchor is stored. On a destroyer, the forecastle is the area forward of the gun mount. The bridge is the main control area for the whole ship. This is where the captain or the officer of the deck give orders when the ship is at sea. In the bridge, you'll find the wheel that is used to steer the ship. This is called the helm. Also found on the bridge are compasses and devices that tell the captain how deep the water is. 
These are called fathometers. Up here, you'll also find the engine order telegraph. Now this is the equivalent of the ship's gas pedal and is used to tell the engine room how fast to go. Let's look around the decks now. Here's a torpedo tube. This is a five inch gun. The area above the main part of the ship is called the superstructure. It's painted black and is where you'll find radio antennas and radar dishes. Navy ships also use flags to communicate with each other. Different flags have different meanings and they are flown to tell other ships special messages. The back part of a ship is called the fantail. The fantail is where the United States flag flies when the ship's in port. Let's take a look now at some other Navy ships as they sit in port at the Bremerton Naval Shipyard. This base has some of the Navy's most famous ships, including the battleships New Jersey and Missouri, and the aircraft carriers Midway and Nimitz. Ferry boats are usually used to transport people and cars between two points. They're sort of like a bus that goes on the water. Big ferries like the Self are really fun to watch because they're so good at what they do. They can load people and cars on at one dock and then transport all of them to another location quickly and efficiently. Cars drive down a special ramp right up into the inside of the ferry, which is hollow. At the other end of the ride, the ferry docks and the cars drive right out.
The cell is 327 feet long and can travel at 17 knots. That's about 25 miles per hour. It holds up to 125 cars and 1,200 passengers. Now that's about the same as three elementary schools. What makes the ferry go are two 5,000 horsepower diesel engines. We took a ride on the South and visited with its crew. This is our radar and we use this for plotting the movements of boats and ourselves and keeping track of where we are in the water at night or in the fog. When you look at the radar screen here, all the dark area indicates water or areas that there's not an object sending back a reflection. The yellow areas, like right here and right here, which are illuminated on our left side of the boat, which is right here at the end of this green line, shows any of the reflections. And this little yellow dot right here is a tug and tow that's coming up on us right now. And if you look out the window, you can see the tug there. It's about three quarters of a mile away. In the fog, we wouldn't see him. At night, uh, we'll use this to keep track too, because at night, distances distort. You can't really tell how far things are at night. You can walk outside and you can see lights, but you won't know how far they are. So this gives us an exact idea of where we're going. Also, we can see our heading, because we're heading up to across the sound here and it'll follow us as we go. And this green line on here shows us the heading of the vessel. These rings here give us our distances off. Uh, we also keep track of what's going on here by means of radio. Uh, there's a vessel traffic control center, which isn't too much unlike the air traffic controllers. We'll call in and tell them that we're leaving Seattle, and they'll tell us what we would expect to see as far as tugboats, ships, other passenger boats. They can't keep track of all the small pleasure boats when people are out here fishing, but as that tugboat we just tracked out here, they were able to uh, have him call in. He was participating in the system, and we knew where he was going beforehand, so we can kind of anticipate. And in the fog, that's really critical because if we are given a position of a vessel and we don't have vessel traffic telling us where he's going or not going, we're just out here guessing. And that really helps us out and cuts down the chance of a collision. This lever here is our steering. This controls the rudder at the back end of the boat. This handle up here controls the rudder at the forward end of the boat. At each end of the boat, there's a, a rudder and a propeller. And this handle here controls our speed. I can pull this handle back, and the boat will slow down. Push this handle forward, and the boat will speed up. This handle controls the propeller at the stern. This handle here controls the propeller at the bow, and we're going to use this handle to stop the boat when we land in Bremerton. And then when we leave Bremerton to go back to Seattle, I have to transfer controls from this pilot house to the one back at the other end, and the pilot house at the other end looks exactly like this one. And to do that, I'm going to transfer controls by pressing this button here. That'll send the controls back to the other end. The little light will flash back at the other end, and the quartermaster will acknowledge that. And then we'll come over here and switch this from number one to number two, and that'll transfer the steering back to the other window house. And this is here, we got our magnetic compass here, and this is a gyro compass here. This is our backup steering system. Here's our communication with the Coast Guard or to other boats. And here's our whistle control here. And here's communication to the engine room. And here's our uh, fuel monitoring system and our speed. We're doing 17.1 knots, and we came to work this morning at 525, and since then till 1045, we've burned 707 gallons of fuel. Well, basically what this is right here is uh, a computer control, and uh, it controls the uh, main engines uh, for propulsion propellers on both ends, and actually it's controlled by the captain uh, in the wheelhouse. Uh, we're back up 
Uh, we operate the computer down here and make sure that there's no problem and take over when uh, the computer uh, fails or doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Uh, the computer's in this cabinet uh, basically right here, and this is part of the computer system under here. Uh, and then we have all the associated gauges and uh, clutches and all of that stuff that goes along with that up on this panel here. And this is our alarm panel in this area that tells us when an alarm goes off. Uh, these two panels on either side of the computer panel are the main engine panels. There's one main engine in each engine room on both ends of the vessel, and this tells us what each main engine is doing. This is our workshop here, and uh, we've got, we do a lot of our maintenance, our fuel injectors, and, and a lot of our maintenance in here. We've got a lot of a lot of fancy tools and a lot of stuff up on the walls. And uh, we build all this, all of the crews build these. Uh, we do it on all of our vessels. It's just part of the pride we take in the job. Uh, now this is our uh, locker room and our uh, galley. We have a, a locker room with lockers for everyone on the boat to keep all our work clothes. Microwave, uh, we have a full galley bag in here with a sink and refrigerator and a stove. and. Uh, Sometimes uh, we cook quite a few meals here. As a matter of fact, Christmas, uh, uh, you know, we don't get holidays off. We're running all the time, so the crew that's on during the holidays, uh, we cook Christmas turkeys and, and roasts and everything uh, right here on the boat and have a nice big meal, uh, even though we aren't with our families. Uh, sometimes uh, our families are our work folks, you know. So it's, uh, it's pretty comfortable down here, and that's, that's the way we work. Anytime you're near a big port city, you'll see lots of ships and boats. And a working harbor or container port is a really neat place to watch all the different jobs they do. Today's modern ports are very efficient. And the docks are dominated by gigantic cranes used in the unloading of awesome container ships. Let's first take a look at some of the other things you might see around a harbor. Drawbridges are often found over rivers and narrow channels near harbors. When a ship or boat with a tall mast needs to get through and the bridge is not high enough, the bridge tender stops the traffic and raises the two sides of the bridge. The boat can then move down the channel. After the boat passes through, the tender then lowers the bridge back down and the traffic can proceed on. The tugboat is the muscle man of the port. Tugs are used to perform all sorts of jobs, but mainly they're used to help push and pull larger ships in and out of their docks. Tugs have very powerful engines and are really easy to steer.
The sides of a tug are protected by fenders that act like a soft bumper. Sometimes tugs are used to fight fires or rescue other ships in distress. Here we can see a tug towing a huge barge. Let's watch some tugs in action. Containers have really changed the world of shipping. Instead of loading a whole big jumble of individual crates, bales, and barrels, the majority of modern cargo ships carry containers. A container is a standard size. It's either 20 feet long or 40 feet long. And it's a steel box in which a variety of goods are shipped. The container is pre-packed at the factory, then it's sealed and taken by a truck or train to the seaport. It remains sealed until it arrives at its destination overseas. This greatly reduces breakage or theft of the contents. Instead of a large gang of stevedores, a small crew with one person operating a huge crane can do all the loading and unloading. When the container ship reaches port, it can be unloaded and loaded much more quickly than in the old days. What may have taken many days or even weeks in the past can now be done in a few hours. Once the containers are unloaded, they are either stored on the docks or immediately loaded onto trucks or trains and moved out. Let's watch a container ship being loaded and unloaded. Now let's look at a whole bunch of ships and boats in a modern harbor. <laughs> 